An historic day in our nation's capital. Tens of thousands of people showing their solidarity for the Jewish state at today's March for Israel in Washington, D.C. It's a breath of fresh air after a month of vicious anti-Semitic threats and pro-Hamas lunacy in the wake of the October 7 terror attacks. Lawmakers, celebrities, and ordinary Americans banding together, calling for the release of Israeli hostages and denouncing the growing wave of anti-Semitism. We stand with Israel. We stand with Israel. The calls for a ceasefire are outrageous. <laughs> Hamas wants to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. So let me be clear. We will never let that happen. But that massive show of support for Israel is at odds with the Biden State Department. A recently leaked internal memo signed by 100 State Department employees accuses President Biden of spreading misinformation about Israel's conflict with Hamas. It also alleges that the Jewish state is involved in war crimes. It sounds like something the far-left squad would say. Speaking of which, those radical lawmakers were once again calling for a ceasefire. Ceasefire means there is no military solution, only a diplomatic and cultural solution. They label us anti-Israel. They label us anti-Semitic and they label us terrorists. They lie about us and they smear us, but we know the truth. Me calling for a ceasefire with my colleagues and centering humanity, I am uplifting deeply what it actually means to be Jewish. You know, Jesse, two starkly different messages America has been witness to over the last few weeks, and that is, you know, with the pro-Israel, it's basically release the hostages, stop the Semitism, Semitism anti-Semitism. And then with the Hamas group, it's basically, you know, from the river to the sea, get rid of the Jews, the anti-Semitism. Uh, and it's a totally different message. How do you think America is reacting to this? Well, I believe the American people are behind the Jewish people because you take religion out of it. It has nothing to do with that. It's right and wrong. And when AOC says there's a diplomatic solution, so what is it? Has the congresswoman <laughs> proposed a diplomatic solution? It's easy to say that. Anybody can say that. If you got hit with Pearl Harbor, is there a diplomatic solution to that? Is there a diplomatic solution to the Civil War or 9-11? I don't think there is. And then Omar says, I oppose violence. <laughs> so do I, Omar. I'm not a Quaker. Uh, you know, if Omar has a son, is she going to teach her son if the son gets hit in the face in the schoolyard, do not hit back. Well, that son, if he does that, is going to have a very tough life in the schoolyard. There are principles of just war. There are seven principles. And here they are. It has to be waged as a last resort. It has to be waged by a legitimate authority. It has to be a self-defense against an armed attack. Is always considered a just cause. The war has to be to redress injury. A war can only be just if it is fought with a reasonable chance of success. The ultimate goal of a just war is to reestablish peace. The violence used in the war must be proportional to the injury suffered. And then lastly, weapons used in the war must discriminate between combatants and non-combatants. Every single one of those seven, Israel is following. Every single one of them. So that is a just war. And we had a guest on the other day who said... Her parents were in the Holocaust. And she said there is deep concern among the Jewish people here and all over the world that if they don't do something now, then there could possibly be another Holocaust. And they talk about how Jewish friends in Germany were friends up until one moment, and all of a sudden they weren't friends anymore. Or they saw a video of horrible, horrible injuries to Jewish people, and they would deny it. They would say, that's not happening. And you're seeing the same thing happen today. Oh, you know, there was no, they didn't do anything. Hamas is innocent. They didn't do anything. I haven't seen it. And, and there's deep concern you're approaching another Holocaust, and that's why, another reason why the war is just. 
You know, Greg, one of the things that Van Jones spoke about at the rally today, he noted, of course, that hate crimes against Jews are up almost 400 percent in the past three weeks. And he said that many people's social media algorithms are not telling them to the truth. Now, we've talked about that repeatedly. Mm -hmm. But to hear it today, it, it kind of has gotten to the point where I think people are starting to recognize that there is a different viewpoint based on your algorithm. Yeah, I, I don't know if it matters. I mean, I... You know, do those do those pro Hamas supporters know that a, you know, they just identified the remains of a peace activist who was burned to death, murdered on October 7th? That would be AOC, AOC if she was at the rave. That would be any of those Hamas, any of those pro Palestinian peace activists would be dead if they were there. They don't, but they probably don't know that. It's interesting when you look at this march. There were no no one stomping on any flags. Mm -hmm. No one's screaming at anybody. The difference between the protests is clear. You have adults peacefully focused in reality what happened versus a tantrum driven by an ideology, you know, based on power. You know, the Palestinian, this pro-Palestinian cause, essentially, when you look at it, has replaced BLM as a performative outrage for self-obsessed screamers because it's all about power. So when you look here, you, the people that are marching for the Jewish state they have a life. The people who are marching for their mental state, they actually need a life. This is what fills them up. It, the, the cause is irrelevant. They just like to go out and hear their own voices. And once again, I'm going to say, you got to keep it simple. One, the war began on October 7th. History is history. Hamas is the bad guy. Number two, Israel will and has to respond. If they don't respond, that's immoral. And it enables Hamas to continue and repeat the atrocity. And three, attacks on Israel are based on an ideology and not reality. Mental state versus Jewish state. And the further away Hamas gets, uh, Hamas sympathizers get from October 7th, uh, even, either through just time or rhetoric, the more likely October 7th will happen again, because that's what they're hoping for, that you forget it. And it goes back to that free punch theory. They're pissed off because the Jewish state is supposed to take a free punch because in the oppressor versus oppressed filter, the oppressed always gets to hit you. The problem is the so-called oppressed are the oppressors. You know, Dana, the president, uh, President Biden, is on his way to meet with Xi Jinping, and he could have delayed that that visit by a few hours by going to uh, the, this march and, you know, where a lot of the leaders were. Should he have gone? Well, I asked this morning if they, he had been invited, and both he and Kamala Harris were invited. They declined to go. I think that I would have advised go. Just stop by. Be a part of that for a moment. Raise your hand in solidarity with uh, Johnson and uh, Jeffries, Schumer, and Joni Ernst. Ernst. So I'm sorry, I'm like the yeah. senator from Iowa is Joni Ernst. And take that opportunity, because in the next block, we're going to talk about Biden not having the ability to run for president the way that a president usually runs. And this would have shown agility, flexibility, and solidarity on a day when his administration from both the State Department and the Pentagon both said that Hamas is hiding underneath that hospital. Mm -hmm. So it would have been, I think, an amazing show of force. I have to tell you, I have learned about this march on Sunday. I've never wanted to actually go to a rally. I wanted to be there, so I have such fear of missing out that I wasn't there to be a part of it. Heard from friends that it was quite moving, and no one wore masks either, yeah. right? They didn't have to wear a mask. And people who dare tear down the posters, who boycott Jewish businesses, who go, who go into some place like McDonald's in London and say, everybody needs to leave because these, this business has a business in Israel. Like, it, we have to remember, that's a distinct minority. They're loud and they're vicious in some cases, but the majority of people support what would happen today. And I really wish I had been there with you in spirit. I think it was amazing. OK. And, and Harold, uh, yeah, today ISIS released a video calling for attacks on Jewish people. And, uh, you know, if the squad thinks Israel is committing genocide, what would their response to this be? First, it's good to be back around the table. I would hope they would agree with everything we've said around the table. I think, Jesse, uh, the seven principles of war Mm -hmm. um, I think are being followed largely by, by our ally and our, our most important ally in the Middle East, and I would argue uh, one of our most important allies around the globe. At the start of this war, uh, the Israelis, or the start of this effort response, because this was a self-defense effort on the part of the Israelis, 
Um, some would argue that the sixth and seventh principle about proportionality and whether or not we're com distinguished between combatants and non-combatants are being followed, but I, I don't agree with them. I agree with you. But this thing started out, the defense, with Bibi saying, and Netanyahu saying, one, we must dismantle Hamas. Two, uh, we will recover, release, get the, gain the release of hostages to recover our hostages. They're now, what I think the administration is fighting for and, and, and lobbying for uh, is a third piece, which is to figure out a way for uh, the Israelis and Palestinians to coexist after this war, after this self-defense. Because I don't call it a war. I call it self-defense on the part of the Israelis. Whatever the number may be in terms of how many people have been killed, uh, I don't know. But I'm, I know one thing. No one likes to see innocent people killed, uh, be they Israelis, be they Palestinians, or otherwise. However, in the real politic of life, uh, wars are messy. Self-defense is messy. Uh, October 7th was tragic. So people have every right to respond. But I do think I give the, I give the reason I give the administration a lot more credit. And maybe, Dana, if, we, if you thought about it this way, if you were in the White House, you don't know when it's been in the White House in, in these rooms where this advice has been given and giving this kind of advice. If the president, who it's hard to imagine, people imagine that President Biden is not supporting Israelis. We got two aircraft carriers there. We got $15 billion in aid there. You got shoal diplomacy being done by Blinken. And for that matter, the president himself went to the region. I think to get, I give them credit because they're thinking about what happens afterwards. And the only way you have some sort of sustainable two-state solution, a sustainable peace, is if both the Israelis and the Palestinians can live in some dignity and safety and security, where they can live and work and raise their kids with some predictability. So I give them credit for that. The question is, uh, can, you, can you find moderate Palestinians that want to do this? Can you hold Arab support in that region to do this? Otherwise, it's just hard for me to imagine. My kids are nine and eight. You have young kids. Our kids for the next 50 years will be watching Israel try to manage Gaza and the West Bank. And if that is the solution we're looking for long term, I'm not for that. I think you have to have the Palestinians and you have to have Arab support in that region for a long term sustainable peace to be achieved. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.